In recent years, Sundance has shifted to showing movies by more and more recognizable talent. In its place, South by Southwest has taken up the mantle of the first-time filmmaker and the undiscovered star. These are the top five films from South by Southwest 2014. Number five, Before I Disappear. My name is Richard, and I am your uncle. I don't care. Our number five spot is the feature debut of writer-director star Sean Christensen, who has adapted his Academy Award-winning short, Curfew, into a feature. Like the short, Before I Disappear tells the story of a man at rock bottom who has his suicide interrupted by his estranged sister, who tasks him with taking care of his niece for the evening. It's a slightly darker version of You Can Count On Me, with lots of wit and barb to their banter. Early reviews have both praised and criticized it for relying heavily on the success of the short and not much more, but because that short has an Oscar? I think it's safe to call that a victory, especially considering how last year's short to feature South by Southwest premiere did. Next up, Faults. A largely contained psychological drama, Faults follows a down-on-his-luck cult deprogramming expert as he attempts to strip away the brainwashing of a young woman who he has locked himself in a hotel room with. Mary Elizabeth Winstead stars as the girl, Claire, while her husband, Riley Stearns, helms his first feature as writer-director. He's had previous experience directing, though, such as with Sundance-selected short The Cub, pictured here, and the script made last year's Blacklist, an annual film industry list of the most exciting but unproduced material so it's no surprise that Faults is something to look out for. The film finds a strange and unique tone, towing the line between black comedy and serious drama, but ratchets up the tension towards a gripping final act. Fort Tilden is so awesome in that post-apocalyptic way. At number three, Fort Tilden. This grand jury prize winner chronicles two girls' exhausting journey to the beach to meet up with some boys they met the night before. On the way, they encounter a number of obstacles and talk a lot about nothing. And although the characters are entitled, aimless, and seemingly shallow, they're never uninteresting or unlikable. I know it doesn't sound like much, but trust us, it's a fun journey that any audience will be glad to follow. It's exciting to see two first-time feature directors find success in such a big way, and we think that this one will be worth looking out for when it inevitably finds its way onto a screen near you. Delta Psy has the upper hand! Next up is Neighbors, easily the highest profile film of South by Southwest, right up there with Chef and Veronica Mars. Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne face off against Zac Efron and Dave Franco in an all-out war between new parents and their next-door fraternity. The plot is okay, the idea is nothing new, and it only occasionally tackles deeper character and thematic moments, but what it has going for it is that it's f***ing hilarious. And look out for Rose Byrne to completely steal the spotlight. Surrounded by some of the funniest actors in comedy, she shines brighter than them all. Have you ever felt this sort of connection with anyone before? Finally, at number one, The Heart Machine. When a man begins to suspect his long-distance girlfriend of not actually being so long-distance, he goes on an increasingly invasive search for answers. More of a character piece than an outright mystery, John Gallagher Jr. is back at it again for another excellent entry into South by Southwest. And if Short Term 12 is any indication, The Heart Machine should be a big success. And Caitlin Scheel, who you might recognize from the newest season of House of Cards, puts in a performance to match. These two actors exemplify the kind of genuine emotional performances we love to see out of festivals like South by, and The Heart Machine looks to be the exact right kind of film to carry the torch for Short Term 12, which is why we think it's the most exciting film of South by Southwest. So what do you think? Were there any great films at South by Southwest that we left out? Did any of these not live up to your expectations? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to Cinefix for more IndieWire movie lists. <laughs>